So the first example problem I'm going to use to motivate log linear models is the language modeling problem, which we saw right at the start of this class. So uh, just to recap quickly, the problem is as follows. We define W sub i to be the ith word in a document. And then our task is to estimate a distribution. This is the conditional distribution over wi, given the context or history, which is the previous i minus 1 word. So here's one example. This is a passage taken, taken from a book by Chomsky from the 1950s. So say we have this sequence of i minus 1 words. Our task is to estimate a distribution over the word that appears at the ith position at wi. Now, of course, one model we studied extensively in this course was uh, the idea of a trigram language model. So again, just a quick recap on this. So a trigram estimate is defined as follows. We define uh, this, this estimate of the probability of a particular word, say model, given the previous context. So this is the word we're trying to predict. This is wi. Uh, we define that as a uh, combination of three maximum likelihood estimates, assuming that we're using smoothing. So we have the maximum likelihood estimate of model, given that the previous two words are any and statistical. We have the maximum likelihood estimate of model, given just the word statistical. And then finally, we have the so-called unigram F estimate of just the probability of seeing model conditioned on no context. And of course, these maximum likelihood estimates are defined as ratios of counts, as we've seen here. So if I want to estimate the probability of some y, given some context x, I take the ratio of these two counts. And these lambdas, these three values, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, dictate the relevant, relative weight of these three estimates. These lambdas are positive, and they sum to 1. So that's a trigram language model. You should be very familiar with those at this point in the class. Um, but they have some very clear deficiencies. OK, so these models make use of only bigram, um, trigram, and unigram estimates. Okay, so they basically restrict themselves to a very small window conditioning only on the previous two words in the context. And if we think back to that passage, there could be all kinds of quote features of the context which could be useful in predicting the distribution over the next word. So for example, we might want to come up with an estimate that conditions on the fact that the word two backs the word two positions back is the word any. Um, notice that we've in some sense skipped over wi minus one in this case and just looked at the word two back. We might condition on the fact that the previous word is an adjective. So that gives us a coarser estimate, which ignores the exact identity of the previous word. Um, but it is an estimate that we might may be able to make relatively reliably, given the amount of data we have. We might condition on the previous word ending in a particular suffix or prefix, for example, ickle. We might condition on the author of the entire article. That's likely to influence this distribution. And we might condition on long-range features. So we might, for example, condition on the fact that the word model, uh, the fact that it doesn't occur somewhere in the previous context. Or we might condition on the fact that some other word, for example, grammatical, occurs somewhere in the previous context. Notice critically these features, and actually also this feature, in some sense go beyond just the two previous words of context to either consider um, the entire document or some meta information about the document, for example, the document's author. The point being that all of these estimates could provide useful distribution, um, useful information about the distribution of the next word in the document. All of these features of the context could be useful in estimating this distribution. And of course, the trigram language model ignores all of the information that I've shown you down here. So let's just imagine that we're trying to define this estimate, probability of this particular word model, given the previous i minus 1 words in the document. 
and we want to incorporate all of these pieces of information that I just showed you. So one natural first attempt at this would be to define a smoothed model that was very similar to the um, trigram models that we'd seen earlier in the class, or rather similar to the smoothing methods we'd seen for those models. So I could take these nine different maximum likelihood estimates that I've shown you here. So here I have the regular trigram, bigram, unigram estimate. Here I condition on the word to back being any, I condition on the last word being an adjective, uh, I condition on the author, the presence or absence of model in the context, the presence or absence of grammatical in the context. I take all of these estimates and I simply take a linear interpolation of these estimates. So I have now parameters, smoothing parameters, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, up to lambda 9, and these are all greater than or equal to 0, and they sum to 1. Okay. So I wanted to go through this as a thought experiment, as a first way that you might try to build a model that makes use of all this different information. In practice, this kind of approach quickly becomes extremely unwieldy and in fact is beset by all kinds of practical problems, really makes it a non-starter. So while this method, a trigram language model that made use of just these three estimates and basically these, these three definitions of the context, that works quite well, once you try to extend these models to include different types of feature, they become extremely unwieldy. As we'll see, log-linear models have a very clean and I think very elegant solution to this problem of incorporating multiple sources of information in these estimates. So here's a second very important motivating exam example for log-linear models, and that's the problem of tagging. Specifically in this example, we're going to look at gain at part of speech tagging. So as a recap, the problem here is to take some sen sentence, some sequence of words as input, and to map this to a representation where each word has an associated tag. For example, n for a noun, v for a verb, p for a preposition, and so on and so on. So here is a natural estimation problem associated with this, uh, with this particular problem. Okay, so if we take a particular word in the sentence. Our task is going to be to estimate a distribution over the possible tags at that position. So again, there might be 40 or 50 possible uh, part of speech tags. So ti is going to be the ith tag in the sequence, and we'll use wi to refer to the ith word in the sequence. Okay, so we're going to try to estimate the, the distribution over potential tags at the ith position, that's ti. Now, under the definition of the problem I'm going to give you here, we're going to condition on two things. Firstly, we could potentially condition on uh, any information in the entire sentence. So W1 through WN is the input sentence. And secondly, we can condition on any information in the previous I-1 tags. So in this particular case, T1 through TI-1 is equal to the tag sequence NNP up here, RB, BB, determiner, JJ. So that's actually a, a sequence of length 5, and we're trying to estimate the probability of T6 given this previous sequence of tags and the entire sentence as input. Okay, so this looks slightly different from the kind of parameters you saw in hidden Markov models for tagging. But we'll see a little later that if we can come up with accurate estimates of these conditional probabilities, then they lead to a very direct and very powerful uh, tagging model, which is an alternative to the, the problem. Um, it is an alternative to the hidden Markov models we've seen earlier in this course. So again, the thing to realize here is that in coming up with this estimate, we could look at all kinds of features of the history or context. Okay, so if we look at this particular example here where we're trying to tag the word base, 
So we're trying to estimate a distribution over tags at this position. We could look at various things. So say we're trying to estimate the probability of seeing the word base tagged as an NN. That's a common noun, a singular noun in English. We could condition on the fact that the current word being tagged is the word base. Or we could condition on the fact that the previous tag, ti minus 1, is the tag jj. Or we could condition on prefix or suffix uh, information about the word being tag, tagged. So I could condition on the fact that wi ends in the single letter e, or the fact that wi ends in the pair of letters s followed by e. I could condition on surrounding words in this case. I could condition on the fact that the previous word is important. Or I could condition on the fact that the next word is the word from. So again, if we continue with this example, any one of these features of the previous context could be useful in predicting the distribution over the tag at the ith position. And we could, once again, come up with a method based on linear interpolation, the old method for smoothing we saw within the context of trigram language models, but it would quickly become really unwieldy as you incorporate more and more sources of information.